Put those hands together. One big. 
big choir. Oh, 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 oh. We got to go. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh, oh. Look at a neighbor and tell them I have a feeling that everything is going to be all right. And if you have faith after two months of hearing about it, tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor it's all right now. No, look at them with passion and with some type of firmness and tell them it's all right. <laughs> seated in the presence and the company of God the Father, Jesus the Son, in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. May it rest, rule, and abide with us, hence now and forever. But I feel victory in the church today. Go ahead and praise him, sir. I feel victory in the house today. Look at someone that looks like they feel like communicating with you and ask your neighbor, neighbor, if I hold my peace and we allow the Lord to fight our battles, victory shall be ours. Tell them I have victory right now. Be seated. We have so many guests with us on today. And I must create the time to acknowledge every one of these guests. 
I will be moving as expeditiously as I can. But I thank God for the Holy Ghost this morning. I thank God for the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit and how he allows it to rest, rule, and abide with us from this day forward. We will clap for all guests, but I'm going to move quickly because there's a word burning in my heart today. First, let me thank you all for supporting me in Gainesville on this past Friday. You that did not attend, I'm sure you prayed for us. You stay connected. It was a powerful encounter. Thank God no one got hit, killed in a car accident. Hopefully no tickets. Y'all ain't talking to me. Sometimes you got to go out of your way to get what you can't get. And when you really want a miracle, you got to press like the woman with the issue of blood. If you want the God of the Bible to bless you, you got to do what folk in the Bible did. Because he ain't coming to you. You've got to chase the glory. Look at somebody and tell them, chase the glory. Yeah. Our first guest hails from St. Louis, Missouri. They are the guests of Rennes and Tamika Atkins, who I love. It's Malik Davis. Where are you? Please stand so we can acknowledge you. Is Malik Davis in the building? Let's clap. All right now, let's clap for him. I asked everyone to start inviting guests, not just guest inviting guests. Shabak, it's your turn. Time for you to push your ministry. Amen. Amen. You too, Bishop Daniel Hinton of North Carolina, know them very well. They hail from Bridgeport, Connecticut. I remember him for almost 20 years. Aaron Blackwood, where are you? So we can, ah, uh, oh, Aaron, God bless you, sir. I've known Hinton for over 20 years or more. I might say 30. And he has sat with me and under me, and he's a good bishop there. Orlando, Florida. Tiffany Harmon invited someone. Now, Tiffany is a fairly new member. Stand, Tiffany, so we can rejoice for one of our new members. So, Jubria White, where are you, Jew? Jubria White, thank you. Can we thank God for Jubria? Hold on, let's stop. It don't say that on here, but I just found out this is Tiffany's daughter. So let's thank God for Tiffany's daughter. I hope you're as smart as your mama. That's a smart cookie right there. What'd you say? Smarter than her mama? Oh yeah, we need you over here then. You smarter than your mama. You too, Plant City, Florida, Daryl Davis, where are you? Can we thank God for Brother Daryl if he's in your section? Thank you, Brother. And how tall are you, man? 6'8". If I was, I wouldn't be a pastor, I tell you right now. God bless your life. That's why God made me two inches from a midget. He knew what to do. Me and Dr. Deborah, we twins in that area. YouTube again, Dundee, Florida. Curtis J. Cohen, where's Curtis J. Cohen? Oh, there you go. Let's thank God for. If any of these guests are in your section, you ought to be as loud to their eardrums pop. YouTube, Jacksonville, Florida. Erica Mack, where's Erica Mack? This person is from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Her son, Timothy Branch, told her, if you're going somewhere, go visit 
the Shabbat church. He didn't tell one person. He told one, two, three people. Sabrina Branch, stand. J.V. on Webster, stand. And Lanaya Webster, stand. Can we thank God for all of them? Are you all visiting? Really? But, I mean, but do y'all live in Orlando? Let's thank God for the graduation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. YouTube, they've been watching us, but they go to Live Church Orlando, and they are visiting us. Nichelle Randall, where are you, Nichelle? Right back there. Y'all light her up in Jesus' name. Y'all, Zoo City, Mississippi. Never heard of it, and I've been all over the world. What is it? What? What? All right, let him explain it. What did you just stand up and say? Oh, you're from Yazoo City, Mississippi. Oh, he wanted to make that plain. I got you, my man. James Howard. Let's thank God for Brother James. Yazoo City. Listen, if I travel, I want folk to know exactly where I'm from. Facebook, Judah Worship Center Ministries Plantation, Florida. Dr. W.L. Mitchell is the pastor. Evangelist Shawandia Austin, where are you? Oh, yes. Come on, y'all. Get loud for this. Y'all on fire up in that two rows right there. Y'all got to behave yourself. I thought my church was wild, but y'all done put their fire straight on now. Fort Pierce, Florida, where a lot of my family is from. The halls are from Fort Pierce. My Aunt Jeannie and a few others and Dr. Mother Dozier, all of them are from Fort Pierce. Evangelist Shawandia Austin brought these people with her. She a guest and she brought a whole church. I don't hear nobody. It's Carmita Hewlett. It's Christina Hunter. It's Lisa Donald. It's Jamika Ward. It's Kimberly Walker. And who's Annette Hall? Who's Annette Hall? You got to be family. You better be. Are you from there? Oh, okay. Because that's the Fort Pierce. Where are you, where you from? Fort Lauderdale. And are you a maiden name Hall or married name Hall? Married? Maiden? Oh, yeah. You be seated. Yeah, 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 yeah. You sit on down, Hall. You <laughs> YouTube, Orlando, Florida. Is Danella Roberts? Where are you? Yes, come on, y'all, get her. Right here from Apopka, Florida, Melissa Williams uh, uh, brought a guest, but where is Sister Williams? Melissa, Stan, we want to see you. Yeah, that's my baby. She brought with her Jasmine Simon. Where are you? Please stand. Stand, baby. We want to thank you. Boy, this is exciting. As a matter of fact, I believe that Melissa just got newly engaged a couple months ago to Daryl Evans. I don't hear nobody. So all of my men that are bold, stay away from his girl before you get knocked out. Because some of y'all going to get knocked out soon talking to these girls on the side of the park. I'm telling you, you're going to get knocked out. I'm already telling you, keep your lady and leave everybody else's alone. Especially in this church. You're going to get it now. It ain't nothing but a time ticking bomb waiting to tell on you. We don't want nobody losing their jobs or their head over nothing stupid. Amen? You got one? Keep yours. Tell somebody that's good wisdom right there. 
You know, if Pastor Paul's is to talk about something, that I already know something, don't you? All right, I'm just telling you now. You can't hide from me, not from me. This person, I'm back to normal, was looking for a church. Like hugs back home in Nassau, Bahamas. Watched us in Facebook and looking for one that similar. I preached in Nassau for Bishop Neil Ellis. Well, for everybody, the, the whole Church of God Convocation Convention, First Church, or everybody that I can name. This name is Dashanique Adderley. Where are you, Dashanique Adderley? Oh, there she goes. Let's thank God for her. Another person views us on Facebook from Clearwater, Florida. Allen Lane. Where's Allen Lane? All right. Now, Allen, do you know the girl from the Bahamas? I figured, okay, I should have just called y'all together. I should have just said both names at one time. Mm -hmm. Black people kill me. They all did they, they. I feel like Steve Harvey. They should be on one list right here. But then the story is, how does someone from Clearwater know someone from Nassau? That ain't my business. New Haven, Connecticut. Facebook, Joel and Maria Pullen. Where are you, Joel and Maria Pullen? These are guests of Keevan Gillard. These guests is from my hometown. Brooklyn, New York is in the house. Angelica Vasquez, where are you? Angelica Vasquez, hello there. What part of Brooklyn? Oh, you from the original Pilgrim, like with Bishop Roy Brown? And Bishop George Shorts? That's my friend, like for real. Oh, yeah, he here, baby, I promise you. Y'all clap for Sister Vasquez. This one says, Bishop preached at a conference in Gainesville. This person hails from Gainesville, Florida. Jamie Crawford, where are you, Jamie Crawford? Can we thank God for Jamie? And last but not least, because we had 28 guests this morning. Shabak, are y'all are y'all hospitable? Twenty-eight guests. Some of you can find one real friend. But this person here, I love. They are my guests. So you treat my guests well. I love them. I appreciate them since I first met them. Barbara Kelly, will you please stand? Can we thank God for my guest, Barbara Kelly? She's the auntie of my friend Don. Don was a guest a month ago. Stand, Don. Don Anthony, y'all clap for Don. Would you like to tell, tell them your age or you want to hold it? Y'all didn't clap for that? I'm going to leave it alone. Adam and Tiffany are newlyweds as of yesterday. We love them. The executive pastor did a marvelous ceremony. We salute Dr. Sonia Mixon as she is still out there. Several of our members are still there. They have been released because they are friends of them. So they're in Charleston, uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, I'm sorry, in Geechee Lands, Charleston, South Carolina, having a wonderful time. I sent them a tape and a video. They cried. I wish I could have been there, but they are married and soon next might be Brother uh, Evans, and then soon next thereafter, after eight sessions, I give six, I give a maximum of 12, 
based upon how urgent it is, I will be giving Keevan about 10 sessions. He'll be getting about 10 full sessions. Antolin will be getting all 12. Is he here today? Oh, he up there? Well, at least text him, let him know he's getting the full length of the sessions before he ever get married. Amen? If you're happily single, will you clap your hands? Because I'm... And if you're happily married, would you clap your hands? Some of y'all would neither. What'd you say? That's crazy. If you ain't happy either, don't be around me because you're miserable. And I ain't your girlfriend. I ain't your boyfriend. I ain't your crying pillow. You got to learn to be happy with yourself. Some of you will never know how sad you are until you stop being around a group of people. You have to learn to enjoy yourself. If you're always looking for someone and ain't no one looking for you, that means you ain't worth looking at. You've got to cherish yourself. Amen. On this uh, Thursday, Friday, I won't be missing service, but Thursday, I'll be preaching for the Azusa Conference in Charlotte, North Carolina, for His Grace, Bishop Hezekiah Walker. Can y'all clap for them? I will be, I will be there, and I want y'all praying for me. Uh, one of my biological sons are going to meet me there, which is unusual. Yeah, I don't even know if he's saved, but this is a good night that I'm going to go hang out with my junior and uh, see what the Lord is going to do there for us. Thank you all, because I don't talk much about my family, but I love them to life. All right, and, I, and I'm very serious about relationships, but we will be together, and then on that Friday, I'll be in Hamlet, North Carolina for Bishop Tim Newton, clap for him. And he has a huge roster, roster of people that will be there singing on my night, I believe, is Lady Kim Burrell. I can't wait to hear her on Thursday. I'm going to have a ball. Somebody say amen. Amen. Now let's thank God for Jesus and let's get to the word of God. Thank you to my associate pastor for such a wonderful introduction. He's an anointed man. Come on, he's an anointed man. He's a, you are anointed. And I want you to protect that oil that's on your life. I want you to protect that oil that's on your life. If you're sitting next to somebody who don't like the truth, change your seat while you can. Because ain't nothing like the real thing, baby. Ain't nothing like the real thing. Let me first say this as you get your devices and or paper Bibles. No matter how saved we all are or on our way to a certain level of sanctification. I have recognized something that I'm very nervous of. Thank you for three people with a mouth. And that is, I'm asking God not to allow me or anyone in this church ever to become so knowledgeable of the word that we cover our wrongs with scripture. My young adults, y'all got my back today. Thank you. I 
I know enough Bible to mess with people's heads who don't know the Bible at all. I know enough scripture to mess with the heads of those who think they know scripture. I have served God and researched God and sat with so many books and scholars that I now see why some people who were once back in the day so powerful ended up pitiful because they knew too much for themselves. I believe, y'all not talking, that a lot of us are being caught in certain situations, not because we're sinful, but God wants to remind us we're not perfect. Mm -hmm. My young adults have my back. All of y'all in here acting real funny like I'm sanctified. You also have made some mistakes. And the biggest mistake you made is who told you you were sanctified? What scripture do you stand on? And how long have you been what you're proclaiming? I'm afraid of people who can only see what's wrong with others and not properly do a self-examination of yourself. Sweep around your own front door. before you try to sweep around mine. The Bible already, I'm about to read, but the Bible already gave us to know, Bishop, that there is another gospel, there is another Jesus, and that whoever that other Jesus is that's making folk preach a different gospel, they have another spirit. And I believe, y'all not talking in the middle, that the messed up gospel are those who believe anything goes. Now, some of you are looking funny as if I'm here to preach against what you're doing wrong. I don't have to preach it. You know what you're doing. Everyone that's got a good conscience, we're aware of what we're doing. Just don't let what you're doing start doing you. Because once you keep doing it, it becomes a piece of who you actually are. All right, I don't hear nobody. And now you're not just needing deliverance. You also may have a demon. And if you have a demon, at that time, the Holy Ghost has left. You cannot have both existing in you. I don't hear no preachers. Are y'all crazy? At one time, you cannot. I think if I say this, I might be judged by those who are weak-minded, but I'm going to say it anyhow. And to the ten that are strong, I really enjoy knowing when I'm wrong. That means I still have a conscience. That means I'm still aware. Some of you think that everything you do is right, but you need a conscience that says... That ain't cool. Let me see how honest certain people are. Have you done anything this week that was a little off? If you have, jump up and sit down. That'll show me. All right, be seated. I was just testing your truthfulness. Maze didn't jump, so he ain't did nothing wrong this week. Kevin didn't jump because he can't right now. Did you jump today? You ain't do nothing wrong last week. Uh-huh. And if you keep sitting under leadership that lets that be what it is, then you start making a whole church birth hypocrites. Just because we didn't get caught mean God didn't see it. Doesn't mean God didn't see it. Are you worried about someone else catching you or the one that can put you in heaven or in hell? 
See, that's what's wrong. Y'all ducking people, but you're not afraid of God. And at this point, at this point in time in my life, I enjoy when I can decide, think, or do something and feel and hear God say, you know better. Or the graciousness of his presence for a screamer, knowing that even you, even when you proceed with the wrong, he's there after saying, let's talk. If you don't serve that God, you don't have one because God will be there before. All right. Now, I don't know about during, but he'll be there after. He's not just a God of a second chance. He's a God of chances, but, but. And then I'm done and I'm going to the scripture. Did Adam, was there actually anything wrong with the tree that Adam ate from? The answer is no, for you who don't know it. See, you went to a church that had leadership that didn't study. The tree was not poisoned. All the trees were good. Talk to me on this side. You told me you came from certain churches, but I can't tell by how you don't respond to the Bible. That's not, and how come some of y'all get extra holy after you make your biggest mistakes? Now you a pro on being holy. I ain't been with no man because the last man hurt you too bad. That wasn't God. That was pain. Sometimes we learn to stop sinning from what the last sin did to us. My young people got me. My young adults. What nothing wrong with that tree? The only thing God did for two folk who will jump is ask Adam without saying it. When he said, don't touch it. For the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. And through one man, sin enters the world. Not through a devil, not through a demon. Through one disobedient man. The devil got in your house through you. Not through no witchcraft. Not to, Oh, y'all quiet now. Once the head of the house sins, the door opens and the devil attacks the entire family. Look how quiet it got on that. All it takes is the person whose God is speaking to, to not do what God said. And then everything is open for attack. I don't know how the devil got in my children. Do you? What you mean you don't know how? But when God told him don't touch this, this is all he was challenging him, challenging him to understand. And I need one person to jump because you love the scripture. He was saying, do you love me enough just not to touch it? That's it. Nothing was wrong with the tree. God didn't curse the tree. The tree never withered up. He didn't remove it. He didn't rebuke it. He rebuked a snake, a woman, and a husband. Never spoke to the tree one time. Because the tree ain't the issue. The issue is, do you love someone enough to not do what you're not supposed to do to maintain the relationship that you have? Now, did that make sense? Look somebody and tell them, work on yourself then. Work on yourself. Ain't the, man, listen, the problem, in, the problem in every church is you trying to help people become what you're not. Let's go. Ain't nobody mad that you're nosy. They mad that you ain't what you suggesting. You need to learn how to keep your man. You ain't got no man. Man, send somebody else to talk to me. I know what your man need. That means you checking him out more than me. See all of these rules. She don't know what to do with him. Why are you studying them like that? Leave that tree alone. Look at somebody and tell them, leave. <laughs> Sunday, 
So I'm in here dressed like a blood, so y'all. They even brought me a red towel. Look down, you will see several of my members and guests with some sneakers on. Some of them went and got Nike. Some of them went all the way, 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 way back for the days of Julius Irvin to Converse's. Some of them came up to the modern day of the Jordans. And um, all of this is for a reason today. If you don't have on sneakers, that don't mean nothing. It just means that we are trying to be somewhat of a narrative to the text that I'm about to embark upon to preach. I will say two or three amazing things to you in this story. At least two or three. And then we'll move forward. Lord, what about USA Olympics? Our team is doing their thing. Oh, that's a week, but America's strong. We doing our thing. And the women are doing their thing. For the first time in years, they took the soccer. They took the gold soccer or they're playing. Listen, the basketball team doing their thing on today at 3.30 is just good to see that we have what we call super athletes. You have athletes, you have professional athletes, then you have super athletes. You got saved, you got some professionally saved, then you got some that are super saved. Which one are you? Y'all didn't answer, tell the neighbor which one you are. I heard one of my musicians, I love him, he tell the truth all the time, he said, I'm just saved. Forget all the professionally saved and super saved, Reverend. But I'm saved. Joshua chapter three, the old church said, Joshua, Joshua. When I grew up, they sound sanctified, they said, Joshua, but Joshua. Yahshua chapter 3, verses 4 through 7. Yet there shall be a space between you and it. This is the beginning of our reading. 2,000 cubits by measure come not near unto it, that ye may know the way in which ye must go. I want you to underscore this from my Bible study because I'm going to preach this. For ye have not passed this way heretofore. Tell someone near you, I'm going to get it in a way no one has ever gotten it before. <laughs> Tell them the way God's about to do it for me is going to blow my own mind. Now if you believe that, shout yes. Those who qualify for this unusual thing happening in a way has never happened, there are some prerequisites. The prerequisites begin at verse 5, and I need preachers talking. Joshua said, the people that's going to get what's in verse 4 must first sanctify yourselves. And the Lord says, thank you, Dr. Deborah. God says, because I want to do this in 24 hours. For tomorrow, I don't hear no tomorrow. Some of you don't believe it. You can be critically sick and by morning, the father put you back together again. And don't go looking for it all day. Let it stay gone. Stop feeling for it. Let it go. God has plans to do some miraculous things within a 24-hour interval, right? I would like to experience that. How about you? That ye may know the way that you must go. I'm sorry, verse 5, Joshua says, Sanctify yourselves for tomorrow. The Lord will do wonders among you. After he spoke to the people, I hope y'all catch this, he then has to speak to the preacher. 
Now, if I say this, I didn't say this Wednesday, but if I say this and 10 of you don't scream, you'll mess up the whole sermon. And that is some of you need to come to church with a few things in mind, but one thing in particular. I want to know if God is speaking to me by what he says through the preacher. That is then called a confirmation. That also means that you're in tune to God outside of these four walls. Let me give an, let me give an example. If you were home and on yesterday you just picked up a Bible and it flipped on Psalms 30 and you read verse 5, be like, that's my scripture for the day. Then you come to church Sunday morning and I say Psalms 30 and 5. You ought to start flipping out. Not on no cars, no homes, no marriage. Just that I'm tapped in. I don't hear nobody that I can't believe. Bishop act like he was in the car with us. We were just talking about this, weren't we? That means God was sitting in the car, listening to you, and then went to your preacher and said, I need to talk to you about something. That's when we all know God is real. He exists. Verse 6, Joshua speaks. Joshua has to now go to the priest. He said, take up the Ark of the Covenant, pass over before the people. I said this on Wednesday that I want to bring to life because we hear it on Wednesday to experience it on Sunday. I want to say this for one screamer. I don't care who you are. Whenever you hear me read the words pass over, I'm telling you get over it. So you got 24 hours. To get over something that don't want you to get over it. Because it cannot go with you to the next level. Look at your neighbor, see if they're friendly, tell them get over it, whatever it is. Now, I didn't say this on Wednesday. Here's the second thing I want to say that would blow your spiritual minds. If you jump, I know you're hearing me. To get over it doesn't mean get away from it. You're not over it if you can't face it and finish your journey where you are. You are a fugitive. You're running. God never fixes what you can't face. To avoid it is not to overcome it. Don't worry, I'll prove it as we go on. Because I don't have the support that I thought I had to do. No, no, I'm good. I'm over you. Take up the Ark of the Covenant, pass over before the people. And they took up the Ark of the Covenant, went before the people. And the Lord said to Joshua, after he spoke to the preachers, this day. Not September not Labor Day or Memorial Day or no special occasions. This day, I will begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I'll be with thee. Let me tell you what that means, and then we'll move on to more better scriptures for you, but 30 folk catch this. God says, I'm going to start blessing this church because I got to prove to them I'm with their leader. See, you didn't read it. He told Joshua, I'm going to magnify not me, you. So what you told the people and what you told your preachers, I'm going to do it so that they understand as I was with Moses. So God's about to do some things even in your house. Because as he is with you, so is he with your children and your children's children. God wants to prove to anything you have responsibility for that he's with you. And the way he's going to do it is by bringing some things to pass that they thought was outrageous. God's going to make them wonder. How you get a new car today? How, the, how am I going to car? How can you pay for me to go to school? It ain't me paying. It's God providing 
Oh, y'all, because some of us have gotten some places that if we think about it for real, Look at someone telling them, my whole story is unbelievable. Tell them, I wish I had somebody who would believe me. I'd tell them a little bit. But tell them, every time I tell my story, somebody jealous of what I have to say. So I got to keep it to myself. There you go again. God is good all the time, all the time. And what's crazy for folk who won't scream is most of them folk jealous is in your family. Sometimes it's your own wife, husband, boyfriend, girlfriend. You went to church today, here you go. Look at you coming home, still quickening. Can we just go eat? There are some folk that don't like your spiritual elevation. They don't like it. Because it continues to show them how short they continue to come. Look at somebody and tell them, we sit down, but we grow up. Would you tell them that? Let's stay in that chapter. Let's go to verse 9. Let's go to verse 9. And let's go down to... I don't want to bore y'all. Let's go to verse 11. Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth passes over before you into Jordan. And I'm wearing my Jordans. I'll be there in a minute. Into Jordan. Now, therefore, take you, I feel, church, 12 men out of the tribe of Israel, out of every tribe, a man. If there's one person in each section who truly believes in a 24-hour miracle, the whole section will qualify. (laughs) Sounds like we all gonna cross over. And look at your neighbor and tell him, and I ain't going without you. I'm not going without you. Be seated or whatever. Verse 13, it came to pass, it came to pass, underscore, as soon, look at your sneakers or shoes, as the soles of your feet of the priests. Oh, yeah. That bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest in the waters of the Jordan. I'm talking to talks. I'm about to put my Jordans right in the Jordan. And the Bible says, not when your whole foot get in, which means your shoes won't get wet. God says, as soon as the sole of your foot. And if you scream on this, you got it. That's how quick doors are going to open. Soon as your foot. Order my steps. And Lord, if you get in my steps, it shouldn't take long for things to happen. You should be able to get jobs you don't have degrees for. You that didn't talk, that's why you blowing it. One day I'ma make that kind of money. Why not today? Your mouth can't even confess what your feet trying to take you to. That's why he didn't say order my words. Because your words and your feet right now don't agree with one another. (laughs) 
that the waters of the Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come from above, and they shall stand upon the heap. And it came to pass when the people removed from their tents to pass over Jordan or to get over it, the priests bearing the ark of the covenant went before the people. And as they bear the ark, and, and as they that bear the ark was come unto Jordan, the feet of the priests that bear the ark was dipped in the brim, not even in it, in the brim of the water, the Jordan overflowed all its banks all the time of harvest. Then the waters which came down from above stood and rose upon the heap very far from the city of Adam to the beside Zarethan. And those that came down unto the sea plain, even the sea salt fell and were cut off. And the people passed over or got over right across Jericho. I know y'all don't know what I'm reading. I got three more scriptures left. So here I go for ten of you. What it says is all hell was coming from everywhere, top, side, and whatever. And it didn't matter as long as you knew God was in your feet. Yeah. Hold on. God is making you step into something that is supposed to kill you. Jordan was supposed to drown them. But I want to talk to folk who won't scream right. As soon as you woke up this morning and put your foot in that shoe. If you didn't die then, you ain't going to die at all. I'm almost there. You're in something right now that's been wearing you like a pair of shoes. But you're able to keep moving. I feel the Holy Ghost for real. I'm trying to be nice because I got a little bit to say. The same way I put my foot in my Jordans this morning, the priests did the same. God told them, put your feet in the Jordan. Now, I want to give a subtopic, but y'all don't look happy enough, but I see several of you all. Because some of you have to go through the hell you're going through even though you don't deserve the extent of the hell you're experiencing. But there are so many people needing to see God's power that he had to use someone strong enough as an example. And I want to say this to 10 folk who will get a miracle tomorrow if the shoe fits. That's what I need y'all to do. Stop looking for something comfortable. Step into it. Step into it. Step into it. I'm prophesying as I'm preaching. I sure am. See, some of you don't know back in the days of the 60s and the 80s when I was born, the problem with some of you in here right now who's not moving, not grooving, not feeling nothing, is you woke up this morning and you put on those rejects. Oh, you don't know what those are. Those are no-name sneakers, cheap, break early, ain't got no name because you don't want to pay the price. And some of y'all are upset because we paid a high price to put on these Jordans. You rather put on rejects. So you reject what I teach. You reject what I preach. You reject what I prophesy. You won't walk in the scriptures. And you hang out with people who keep rejecting because they're going to keep doing it until they find something comfortable. They can't walk through What's uncomfortable? Look at someone and tell them, I can't tell you my business. But from how he's preaching, I think I qualify for this 24-hour turnaround. Because tell them I'm in something real tight right now. That if the Holy Ghost don't come and help me with this, I'm going to drown in my Jordan. (laughs) 
Some of you are laughing, but you up to your stuff up to your neck. Verse 17, then one more scripture. The priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, look at these words, stood firm. On dry ground, auntie, in the midst of the Jordan. This is what you need to catch, Sister Nikita. Young adults. Elder Curry, thanks for coming over. All of you catch this and scream for yourself. What they stepped in was wet until they landed. So it went from one extreme to the next that fast. You can go from depressed to delivered that fast. You can go from unemployed to a business that fast. The thing is, we don't believe in that God. You're trying to serve a God that makes sense. And you forgot that while you're trying to figure him out. I got to do this, that, and the other, then I'll be better. Who told you that? What does the word say about it? What does the word say about it? Will you ask somebody what I just asked you? And some of y'all stop letting folk get on your nerve who have never spent one minute in your shoes. They're going to always judge you because they've not been in the situation. I can't believe you crying over him. You ain't got to him. See, everybody's tolerance is not the same. So don't judge me talking about that's a little thing. Let me tell you about mine. Your feet are bigger and so is your mouth. What I need you to understand is what I'm going through is what I'm going through. And unfortunately, everyone has to handle pressure their way. Some run, some remain, some communicate, some get silent. Just very weird, but what bothers me is when you're maturing God, there's only one way to handle it, and that's to trust him. Now, I notice a group that grew up that when you talk to somebody one-on-one, -on -one, you got two hours of wisdom, but when you're in church not preaching or talking, you ain't got nothing to say. I want y'all to avoid these people because something is wrong with them. If you only talk when we in private behind people's backs and can't say what you say in front of everybody, something is wrong with you. Now, I'm going to tell you, but don't tell nobody I told you. Something wrong with you. You got to be able to stand behind your truth. I can't believe you snitch. I can't believe you lied. We snitched on your lie. A lie should not be protected. That's a knockoff pair of Jordans. Look at somebody and tell them, don't. When you say, I got Jordans too, only people that don't know the authentic thing will give you a compliment on the fraud. And because you speak in tongues and move, that don't mean you saved. That's knockoff salvation. I know you're saved when you're being thrown in the lion's den, when you're being put in the fiery furnace, and you still say the God that delivered, even if he don't deliver me, he's still able. If your conversation don't match your footwork, you a fraud. Y'all don't want to have church. So some of you are in something not because it's in you. He's testing what you say. Lord, if nobody go, I'll go. If mama don't go. So now mama ain't going. He won't see. 
if my husband don't go, now nah, he ain't going. And the Lord's like, you going? They can talk about me, but on Christ the solid rock, they talking, you rocking, leaving. Can you still do what you say? I'm a preacher, I'm a prophet, I'm a prophetess, I'm an apostle. We don't run from friction, we face that. You are neither one of those things. You can't be used until you can be abused. And some of you don't even understand that philosophy. That word use has so many suffix with them, prefix with them, that if you understood it, you wouldn't say you were chosen. For two folk who would scream, you want to be used, but can you survive being refused? You want to be used, but can you survive being abused? You want to be used. Why y'all quiet now? You got to still bless who would curse you. That's refusal. You got to. You know when you're chosen, because when you're chosen, nobody likes where you are. I want to go where people can receive my ministry. What's that? Your ministry different from you? God didn't choose no ministry. He chose you. And if you don't feel like you're something without a ministry, you ain't nothing. I was doing prophesying before I ran revivals or preached. I was on the drums and God would give me a word for somebody. But I took it to my pastor. Pastor, I don't know what's going on, but Lord told me mother sick. He said, mother, come here. Brother Hall, tell her what you said. Y'all want to practice without supervision, right? That ain't happening. See, it's still quiet. We're going to lose some more members now. Because that ain't happening. They told you years ago, before you buy a shoe, try it on. You take it home, wear it, scuff it, now you want to return it. No. Take a little more time and take off the shoes you have and put your foot in there. Walk, wiggle, make sure. Don't you claim a title that you can't walk in. That's all I'm telling you. Everybody who has a baby is not a mother. You just had a baby. See, don't you claim nothing now. Let me get back to this. They stood firm. On dry ground, but what they stepped in was soaking wet. So what confuses people for the middle who will get activated is how you're in something they know should kill you, but you chilling. They're wondering, how is it wet all around you, but not wet where you stand? Y'all ain't... Now, you Floridians should be screaming because it could be raining across the street and dry over here. And that's why they're jealous because God's raining on you. And he ain't raining on them. I've been here long enough in this state without folk even knowing for years, over 20 years that I was living here. I, I didn't plan on pastoring ever, but it happened and so be it. But now I'm so good with the weather, I can look ahead of me and tell people it's raining over there. Anybody else want to talk to me? Be like, we're going to get up about three miles, it's going to be pouring. Man, it's sunny over here. I don't care what it is right now. You got to be ready for what's up ahead. I keep an umbrella in my truck every day because this is hurricane season. Why you got an umbrella? It's sunny. I am not carrying it for now. I know what season we are in. And at every given moment, I'm going to have to reach and pull it. And I don't want to have to go back out of my way to get what I should be carrying with me. 
And the devil's mad with some of you because you ain't got to go back to get what you need. You brought it with you because you understand when I'm anointed and I join a church, I'm not going to be liked by several people. So I have what I need with me. Twenty minutes, we're going to close this. Now listen here, all of you that are chosen of God with or without paper licenses, chosen, laced with grace, flawed but favored. Remember what I'm about to tell you now, and if it's you, you stand up slow and like you're pausing and sit down and keep your ears open. God is going to anoint some of us to be in a thing that we didn't do anything wrong to be in it. And he's going to make us stay in it firm until someone else gets over it. All right, y'all didn't read it, huh? He made the preacher stay in it until all Israel. Which means they may not even acknowledge you, but they got over it because of you. I know y'all not, they may ignore you and act like you never helped them, never gave them an idea, never gave them a dollar, never confirmed nothing. Don't you get mad at that. You stay firm right where you are. You follow? You stay right there. You don't talk to them while they cross over. Because if you talk, then you'll prolong how long the Jordan will be open. Because God promised for screamers, I'm only going to keep this open for 24 hours. Y'all, oh, y'all. Oh, y'all forgot the time? He said tomorrow, which means this is your only opportunity. You ain't got time to talk and fix nothing. I'll call you after I get over this, but I'm going to call you. God says to prophesy this, give a word of exaltation to 50 of you. I'm glad that's a high number, Lord. To 50 of you who will give him glory for five seconds. He says, tell you, you've been in it for a long time. You only got a few more people to let cross over. That's all you got to do. And when they cross over, it looks like they're getting over on you. But they're getting over it because of don't take this season personal. Tell three or four people that and mean it. Don't take this season personal. I see men standing and clapping. I must be preaching. But nobody told me the road would be easy. And I mean, it ain't been easy. But I don't believe that he's brought us this far. I want somebody to get one person only and act it out if you know how. I want you to stand firm as if you're in a mess and tell them, go over. And let them walk by you. Just tell them, walk by me. No, walk in front of me. Once you step in front of that person, you out of what you were in. Don't go back in it. I saw y'all crossing each other, but all y'all ain't chosen. But if you know you're chosen, stand in it and tell your neighbor, get on over there. Because the faster you get over it, I can step out of it. Y'all ain't I can't even step out of it. get out of it too but I can't until you get over it do this within 15 seconds change spots with your neighbor and then go back to your own spot and let them know you got over it and I just got out of it all right, and then go on and switch back. 
Look at your neighbor and ask him, are you out of it? Are you over it? Are you out of it? Are you over it? Are you out of it? Are you over it? Are you over it? Are you out of it? Come on, be one or the other. That's why you hear some folk be both. They say over and out. Y'all ain't, I'm over and out. My last scripture, Dr. Barbara, hope I ain't boring you today. Hope you got straight A's on all your exams. Joshua 14, chapter 14, verse 9, then two paragraphs, then let me holler because I'm Pentecostal. And I hear folk, he, ain't, he don't have to yell for me. No, when I'm yelling, that's for me. When I'm teaching, that's for you. But when I say, hey, that's for me. Joshua 14, verse 9 says this for three folk who scream. And Moses swear on that day, saying, surely, I'm talking to Shabbat and visitors, the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's inheritance. How long? All right, I'm going to read it one more time. Because it's obvious you still stuck on the last things I said. We over and out. Who gets blessed because of this? Moses swear on that day saying, surely the land where on, which means you can claim nothing you have not stepped on. Whatever your mouth is claiming, your feet must step to it. Uh-oh, y'all ain't tough. You can't get rich sleeping. The land whereon thy feet have trodden shall become your inheritance and your children's forever for two focal screen because thou hast wholly followed the Lord. Look what it said, not your God, my God. You obeyed what I told you in chapter three. And now God says you would have never owned nothing if you didn't first go through the Jordan. Everything that's yours is on the side of fear. Y'all ain't talking. You've got to walk through fear. You've got to walk through your phobias. You have to walk through your depression. Y'all ain't. You can't wait for the sun to shine. You got to jump in while the to, while while the river is overflowing, and it has to seem impossible. It has to be threatening to you. Come on, high five somebody and tell them I'm taking this walk in the dark. That's what faith is. Let me give you two examples and then one comment. A grown man, Elder Charles Curry, had some keys. And he went down south towards Florida to go visit what you call the gators and the reptile park. While he was there with his children, his keys fell out of his pocket and went into the reptilian. I, I just made that word up. Went into the reptilian area. Yeah. So the father went to the keepers of the reptiles and reported that his keys had fallen into the snake pit. But his two children who were young said, Dad, just go in there and get your keys. The father looked at them and said, boy, you sound crazy. The keys are in the snake pit. They said, but you are daddy. You ain't scared, are you? And he said, I ain't scared, but I ain't stupid. No, you scared, Doc. See, some of y'all try to impress people by protecting your phobia. He should have just told them. I'm scared of snake. 
So he did not go in and he had to wait three hours because the person who would literally go in was not there. When they called, the person had to come from a far part of Florida, get there, go in there with certain clothes on, pick up the keys, give the man his keys. Now he's got his power back to get in his car to go home because before that he was paralyzed by fear. The same park a child went was an infant dropped its ball and the ball went into the reptilian, y'all don't hear me, area of the park. The mother was looking away. The child got out of the stroller, walked into the snake pit, got his ball and kept on playing. They scream over the mic, child in the snake pit. People ran to deliver the child, but the child didn't actually need to be delivered. The child wanted his ball. They then asked, how come the serpents did not strike the child but would have killed the father? Because the serpent knew the child had no fear. Y'all ain't tell. And some of y'all got to wake up by tomorrow and let the devil know those my keys. Y'all ain't tell. If a child, I, wait a minute. I need those keys because without them, I can't open no doors. You got to stop calling for help. Waiting past your time, you only have 24 hours. Most infants are fearless. They even fearless of your threats in your hands until you hit them and it hurts. Once it hurts, they pick up a phobia. So now when anybody lifts their hands, they duck because they've been introduced to fear. But if they've not been introduced to it, they want them keys. They want a ball. The child was in there. People took pictures. Y'all looking at me with the child holding the ball and the snakes all around it resting. The father would have got bit as soon as he put his hand in there. Mr. I ain't scared. Oh, I wish I had a better church. God said, tomorrow, this is for several of you who will scream, I'm going to put what's yours in what you think is dangerous. And I'm going to see whether you got on your Jordan. Y'all, I, I'm, wait a Now, some of y'all looking at some of them who are standing, why are they way up front? Because they're ready to jump in. You almost ready. You've been standing there shaking like this for two hours. The child done walked in and got the ball. You still waiting on the man to get your keys. The steps of a good man. I'm about to close here now. Listen. That child walked in there, got the ball. Child got delivered. The way the child got delivered is the child got the ball, and then the child was lifted out of his situation. Uh oh, oh. Oh, yeah. Help came after you got what you wanted. Some of y'all want help getting what you need. God said, go get what you need, even if it's dangerous. I'll send the help after I see you walking by faith. Faith does not wait for an opportunity. Faith creates the opportunity. E flat. Your feet has been commanded, we're closing, to walk you into victory. But let me say this for 10 folk who go crazy. The problem we all have, even me, is what do you do when victory looks like defeat? You expect things to look good for it to be God. Why can't things be bad and God still be good? 
Oh, y'all are quiet right now. He said, nay, let me get out of here. In all these things. Not out of all the things in them. You got to be in something. Let me talk to talkers now. I ain't looking at those who ain't talking no more. In everything. Uh, give him thanks. For this is the will of God. Concerning you in Christ Jesus. The Lord gets more glory. When you've stepped into something that should kill you. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. I'm almost there. While I'm on this tedious journey. I'm not there. I want Jesus to walk with me. Y'all too quiet to get victory. Hold my hand, Lord. Hold my hand. Hold my hand, Lord. Please hold my hand. While I'm on this tedious journey. Hold my hand, Lord. Hold my hand. I want to say this again. God is about, and I'm about to close, to take your feet and let those feet lead you into a place of victory. But you've got to be wise enough to know sometimes victory looks like defeat. I'm going to say this, and you can ease in there, but I'm going to say this. And I'm going to leave some of y'all who ain't going to make it tomorrow alone. But 30 of y'all catch this. When you get to the place where you see defeat, let defeat meet your feet. Let defeat ask, why are you here? Let defeat say, you don't make enough money. Let defeat say, you're going to need a cosigner. But you let defeat know I didn't come by myself. All of my help. I feel God comes from the Lord. Why don't you grab somebody's hand and tell them all of my help cometh from the Lord. Y'all ain't preaching to the front of me. If it had not been for the Lord on my side. Where would I be? And what would I be doing right now? I want you, don't touch nobody that ain't talking because that's a sad individual today. But find somebody who knows that I got 24 hours to watch God take me into victory. Victory! shall be mine ah, victory shall be mine if I hold ah, if I hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battles I know come on Shabbat and preach I know that victory shall be mine you got to let defeat see that your feet is now there. Now what y'all don't know, and I'm about to close because y'all look a little laid back, is the word for Michael Jordan. He had a contract with Nike. Started out with Adidas. Would have stayed with Adidas if they could almost match the price of the Nike deal. But Nike made the deal too sweet. Look at somebody and tell them I made good with the devil. But I'm in a contract with Nike now. Tell them you'll catch that in a minute. When Michael was talking to Nike, they made sweet deals that if he could do certain things within a certain season, his contract would explode. 
and God is saying I'm ready to increase the amount of your contract if you can do what I tell you to do by a certain time here is the mind blowing deal give me some house so I can preach here is the mind blowing deal and maybe 30 y'all will scream the word Nike in the Greek is the word victory I know y'all didn't know that the Bible said we have the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord the word for victory in the Greek is Nikos in the plural it's Nike which means victory so you had a meeting with victory and victory told you if you hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battles that victory would be yours what y'all won't even scream about it's you that don't have Jordans but still got a pair of Nike there's a little brand on the side of your sneaker it's called a swoosh if you look at the little swoosh sign what that means in the brand huh, is just do it and some of y'all don't have enough sense that if God told you to do it he already knew your credit was bad he already knew your credit score was low but swoosh just do it look at somebody and tell them your feet are ready to go where your fear won't take you but i'm trying to tell you by tomorrow morning put on your jordans step in what you gotta step in let the devil know i'm here i'm here i'm here it's by the grace it's by the grace of god touch somebody else on the right and left i feel like preaching today and say neighbor i don't know what your shoe size is but tell them i'm so blessed that if you don't have a pair i'll buy you a pair just so you can feel what it is to walk in victory put your foot in my shoe and you will find out you can survive a divorce you can survive a stroke you can survive a child out of wedlock all you gotta do is step in there y'all still ain't talking to me but i had y'all ain't talking on this side i had the bible say all you got to do to be blessed is you need two shoes so tell your neighbor i am one foot you are my other foot when i take a step i need you to step two and once we both stop stepping we can go where we gotta go but being still ain't gonna help nobody i'm pressing on the upward way new heights i'm gaining every day no higher plane that i found Lord, plant my feet. Plant my feet. Plant my feet on higher ground. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, as quickly as you jump up and land, that's how 
back. My soul looks back and wonders. 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 My soul looks back and
all of you that God's been good to, and you keep asking him for something better, but he don't get nothing good out of you, you're not getting it. That's the answer. But all of you that know he's able, and you need him to put speed on it, whether you know how to dance, leap, or clap, I'm telling you, just do it. So the next time the music plays, give God glory and watch God make a way for you. You better watch it by screaming. Come on in to the virtual sanctuary. Come on in where the table is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on. You that know, prophet, hall, bishop, pastor, whatever, I am going through something. I'm not going through things as worse as others, but my situation hurts and I need God to help me. I promise you, when your feet hit that floor, God is going to turn some of the most difficult situations around. And he's also going to do it to prove that as I am with Moses, so am I with you. So all of you that know people who you love that are in snake pits that should be bit, paralyzed by fear, you got 30 seconds to praise him right now, right? They're praising God all over this church.
Y'all look good. Y'all look good. You look well. Hiya! A church full of believers. That ties in Jesus' name. Your Jordan, your Air Force One, your number seven, three, eleven. If you got on your Nike, put your feet on the floor and let the devil know I'm getting out of this.
Just your mouths, your hands. Hold someone's hand if they're available. I need the oh, I need thee. Hiya. Come church. Yes. 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 Yes, Lord. Come on. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh. Yes, Lord. Oh. I'm not finished. Yes, Lord. Have your way. Can I get somebody to help me? Have your way. Have your way. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Have your way. We got one more. Have your way. You ought to tell me. You've been so good. Everybody. You've been so good. You've been so good. Whoa, whoa, no, 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 no. You've been so good. You hang out. You I had some sanctified for
The Holy Ghost is in here. If you ain't jumping in, that's your fault now. We're believing God for a 24-hour turnaround. We're about to go home and all the joy that floods my soul. Oh, something happening now I know. He, he, he touched me. And he made me. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rokatana man so yen de bansia yo. Hallelujah. Ropan sandi di oshama. Shene, shene mandoshe. All the joy that floods my soul. Oh, 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 oh. something happened, and now I know he, he touched me and he made me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Ha ta 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 ta. Te 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 koshana mahaya. Come on, those shayana. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Hey, hey. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. It ain't praise if it ain't heard. Ain't no silent praise. Ah, ta, 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 ma, yeah. Don't be ashamed to magnify your God. Oh, oh, oh. That floods my soul. Oh, oh, something happened, and now I know he. Touch me, ya 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 ya, mando shaba. He touch me. He touch me, and he made me. He made.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Atana Mansia. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Atama Shianda. Thank you, Jesus. Hey. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, 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 Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want to say thank you, Lord. We got to go, but from the rising of the sun on to the going down of the same. He's worthy. Jesus is worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Ooh, pray. How I praise him, um, praise him, mm, praise him, Jesus, blessed Savior, he's worthy. From the rising, from the rising of the sun, unto the going down the Glory to God, stay right there. Your word, Jesus is worth. This is an unusual day. Last time, I mean it from the rising of the sun. Keep it low. I want y'all to stay stuck on this name for about five minutes. Just call him Jesus.
Jesus, blessed Savior, everybody. Jesus, blessed Savior. You're worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Oh, thank you, Lord. Bow your heads, close your eyes. As you can look around the auditorium, you who were gazing, there are people that are in the posture of worship, bowing, some laying, men crying, hands elevated, tears dripping from our eyes, not out of sorrow, but from joy and hope. I believe God is going to turn it around. I'm going to do something and then my associate pastor is going to come and pray over the children. I don't want no leaving. I don't do this often. But I'm going to open the doors of the church today. I'm going to open the doors of the church today. But I'm doing it in a prophetic way. You that want to be members, then I'm going to do something I've never done. You who want to be properly covered, you want to be connected to this prophetic office. I'm going to open the doors of the church and have you come out. Make the best decision of your life is to be connected to a source that's connected to the source. The doors of our church are open. That means you come out of your seat, you stand before us, and we welcome you as a member of this fine church called the Shabbat Church. Shabbat, let's clap our hands. I see three right now. I don't hear nobody. Come closer. Oh, boy, my boy Don is joining my church. Don't have me cry, man. Lord, my other son, step up, son. We've been going through in this ministry, I'm a very transparent pastor. We've been going through a volatile time of people coming and going. For that reason, Don, I don't open the doors of the church much ever, ever. Because the disappointments that come along with that is a pastor that loves his members when they don't have an understanding and leave a ministry, they kill that leader's hopes. Then they have nerve to call the leader and say, I love you, I just can't be at the church. If you don't love the vision, you don't love the visionary. Church is not a perfect place. It's a place of tension, especially in the 21st century. It's a lot of crazy stuff going on in church because there's crazy things going on in the world. Life has changed. People can marry who they want to marry, what they want to marry, say what they want to say. Nobody wants any rules. But any of you that know me or will get to know me, not a perfect pastor, but I'm imperfectly perfect for you because I understand where you are. Can y'all clap for that while I'm talking? I wasn't going to do it today. I said, no, Lord. Lord said, Todd, open the door. I said, no, because my heart can't take it. 
other pastors don't care. Leave, shut up, guard us in more. I'm too old for that. I'm tired of seeing bastard children versus foster children versus adopted children. We need people who understand. I didn't join the church to be liked. I joined the church because I like what I'm hearing. I like the word of God. I love the worship. The biggest mistake you all will make if you make it is trying to become friends with strangers. Sitting at tables that don't like your church or your leader. You got to guard your heart. You have to guard your heart. I'm excited, not just about y'all, but I'm excited about men when they make a decision to join a church. You know I love you. Been waiting on you. I didn't ask you to join. I believe God led you here. We never talked about it. But I can see your heart, Don. I waited over two years for you. Over two years. With me already knowing where you're from. But I was patient. Who was the one that asked me to open the doors? Whose sister Nicole Page or something like that? Who was that? Who was that name on my paper? That was you? Someone asked me on a note on my pad, please tell Bishop I want to join today. Somebody's name on my paper. Where's my, where's my book? For whatever reason, this is the best day. You made it in on a 24-hour turnaround. I don't hear you. I'm not going to take you through what other churches do, all the formalities of repeating after me and all of that. Not today. I want to say thank you to each and every one of you separately. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. And none of you Africans said it back but one. But thank you. I'm going to go down here again. Y'all ain't going to treat me like that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And gorgeous. Thank you all for choosing this church. No one would have ever, and I'm closing with this, no one would have ever left this church. And I'm going to see if my members remember, if they do what I tell you when you join. I said, if anybody should bring any foolishness to you or try to pray for you behind the scenes and or prophesy, bring it to your pastor so that we have the chance to protect you and not allow some of the people who are trying to build a church off of our church to secretly pull you aside to tell you what you want to hear. I'm not going to preach what you like. But I'm going to preach what you need. And we all going to go to heaven together. Can I get a witness? Hold hands very quickly. All of you across here. Now, Father, bow your heads, close your eyes. I do thank you for this addition. And I want to call the addition, Lord, a multiplication. Next week when they come, let me release a prophetic word upon two of them because I see it now. And I know one shall remarry that's been hurt. But, Father, I want you to bless them. I want you to give them soft hearts. Give them hinds feet. Prepare each one of these with a special pair of Nikes. Let them walk in victory. Let where they walk, what their hands touch, be theirs. And bless them and their children and their children's children, if they have any. Bless their businesses to grow by 300%. I want you to shock them. Show them as a sign that they have stepped into this Jordan River that you will multiply everything that they have asked you to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Face your brothers and sisters, please. You who want to come greet them, come quickly and love on. Y'all clap better than that. Love on our new Shabakians. Yes, and then don't walk. Let's prepare to give and let us pray over our children who are going back to school. Hallelujah.
Make them feel that genuine love. Lord, I thank you for being obedient because you know my heart. I didn't know this many was going to come. That's a lot of Shabbat love. Have y'all heard him sing? Well, you got one. Let's move quickly, babies. So many others would have still been here if they would have just consulted their pastor before it got big. Y'all getting a lot of love. Most of them didn't get this kind of love. While they are walking and being loved, while they're walking and being loved on, I need a hundred people to sow a $40 seed today. That would bless me. And I'm going to wait till they walk, but I want you to get it ready. I need 100 members and visitors to sow a seed of $40 or as close to it as you can. That would be a blessing to me. I thank God for you. Once you get it, you can start coming and walk around this side and you can go back to your seats. Once you finish loving on people, go back to your seat and get your offering. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you, Sister Smith. Thank you, my real sister. Michelle giving me some money, that's a miracle. She offered me a vacation paid for in the car today, so I'm making it known to the world. Yep, I ain't buying no dis discount ticket either. Thank you all, thank you, Bishop, I love you. I wish that steak place was open. I feel a repeat. And my man gave $100. He's always blessing his leader. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Associate Pastor, you'll be coming shortly. Don't just pray for the children. Pray for the teachers and the educators together. Because they need more prayer than these kids. They got to put up with these children. <laughs> and they don't get paid enough to babysit and teach. clap for our addition to our family. And the Lord just spoke to me, so I'm going to wait. Thank you, thank you. I'm still calling him Deacon Gums. I'm waiting on him, though. But Deacon Gums, thank you. 